Welcome to Outside Again Adventures. On the first leg of our bear hunting journey, Diane and I flew into Portland, Maine, rented a car, and drove up the coast to the beautiful coastal town of Castine. One of the oldest towns in North America, we immediately fell in love with Castine. We stayed at Manor Inn Bed and Breakfast overlooking Castine Bay. With all of its beauty and antiquated charms, it's a stay we will long remember. Diane loved the four poster bed and the clawfoot tub. Me, I love the scenery right out our window. The famed Dennett's Wharf was our next stop, and man did it live up to its reputation. I'm Bill Cooper with Outside Again Adventures. I'm at Baxter State Park in the north woods of Maine. Here in this park is where the Appalachian Trail begins. The beauty of the region captured our imaginations, as did the beautiful wooden canoes for which the region is known. A couple of hours later, we arrived at Texas River Outfitters near Boyston, New Brunswick, right on the bank of the Texas River. We immediately fell in love with the lodge and outfitters, Larry and Bonnie Davidson. Other hunters in camp checked their bows while I sighted in my rifle. Hi, I'm Bill Cooper with Outside Again Adventures. I'm up in New Brunswick, Canada with Texas River Outfitters and I'm going on my very first bear hunt. Texas River Outfitters leases 250,000 acres of timber company lands for hunting. With little over an hour in the stand, a sow and two cubs showed up. At 8.40 p.m., a big sow came to the bait. I nervously watched the bear for eight long minutes before she offered me a good shot. Diane and I are on a bear stand up in New Brunswick, and uh, we got on the stand about uh, 5 p.m. And about 7.30, we had a big sow and a cub come down a little dirt lane to the left, and they got within 10 feet of us. She looked right up at, at us in the stand, but didn't get spooked. She headed towards the bait, but made a turn and went back the way she came. But about 8.40, we had a big bear, uh, a boar, I think, that came out to the baits and fed around for seven, eight, ten minutes, finally got a broadside, made a good shot on him, he humped up and ran into the woods about 20 or 30 yards and we could hear the death moan, so we know we got a dead bear laying out there and we're just waiting for the guide to come back to the stand and we're gonna go in and get him. But we're hunting with Texas River Outfitters. Yeah, 160 pounds maybe. Really? Yeah. Put a good shot on him. Well, I thought it did. You did? Yep. He looks got a great looking coat on it. He does. Dry sow. Right now. Dry sow. Yeah. I was hoping there's a boar, but oh well. It's all right. She's dry. Yeah. Yeah. Not as big as I thought, but I'm happy with that for a first hey, bear. That's nice. Oh, yeah. Look at the coat on oh, Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're, all, they're all pretty. I was very happy to have bragging rights to the first bear brought into camp. The next morning, I enjoyed a hearty breakfast and headed down to the Texas River with newfound friend Larry Lord from Maine for some brook trout fishing.
The brookies weren't huge, but what they lacked in size, they made up for in beauty. That afternoon, it was Diane's turn to hunt, and we ran across this curious moose. Larry soon had us set in a stand over a bait, and Diane checked her equipment, and we were there till 10.30 that night when Larry picked us up. The clouds rumbled while we stared through the dense forest in search of a bear. Unfortunately, nothing came to the baits. The mosquitoes were thick, and thermocells saved our hides. Young Frank Grady of New York took his first bear. 76-year-old Bob Amaral of Massachusetts entertained us with tales of his near 40 bear kills while everyone prepared for another evening on the stand. Diane explains that this is her third evening on the bear stand and she hasn't seen a bear yet. But the first two evenings there was a boar that circled us several times and he was woofing. The uh, rut had kicked in and he was keeping other bears run away from the barrels while he was establishing his territory. Squirrels and other small animals were regular visitors to the bait. Mosquitoes and black flies buzzed and the clouds opened up. Bob Osgood of New Hampshire nailed a nice bear with his bow that evening. My name's Bob Osgood from Wyndham, New Hampshire, up here in uh, New Brunswick hunting with Texas River Outfitters. Um, went out on stand last night, sat for oh, an hour, an hour and a half or so. This old Laurel came walking up the road, went to the bait, put the herd on her. It was a pretty exciting hunt. We had a great time while we were here. Excellent, uh, excellent uh, uh, company to do business with. How many bears did you see, Bob? Well, while I was here, I probably saw, I don't know, two or three bears. Uh, we, you know, we saw one uh, pretty nearly every night we were out, so and, uh, a lot of bears up here, no doubt about it. Great place to come if you want to hunt bears. Expert guides Dale Weldon, Manny Bedard, and Larry Davidson have decades of bear hunting experience. Diane climbed into the stand with high hopes on the very last day, but 20 mile per hour winds and driving rains drowned her hopes, maybe next year. If you would like to hunt with Taxus River Outfitters, we have a web page on the internet. It's www.taxusriveroutfitters.com. We do bear, moose, salmon, and deer. We, uh, my phone number is 506-369-7105 and my email address is taxisriver at taxisriveroutfitters.com.